an introduction into HSS uh, software. Well, here's the, the topics that we've advertised that we're going to cover, or some of the topics. Uh, what is it? So we will uh, explain exactly what the software is um, and some of the methodology that you use or tools that you use when you do it. Drag and drop, connecting components, connector directional arrows, change properties, copy and paste. Nothing too uh, outlandish there, but nonetheless important topics that you do need to understand slash learn how to do in order to uh, utilize the software. As well as a, a few other things, manual recalculation, text annotation, selecting equipment. The software does allow you to select equipment as well and how to save a file. And when you do save a file, what coordination files uh, you can uh, create or the software can create for you automatically like a schedule or a report or the drawing itself in DXF and we'll cover all of that as well and then towards the end I am going to introduce uh, the group to the wizard and uh, that uh, could be an exciting topic uh, when we get that far uh, down there so these are the topics and there'll be other topics as well but nonetheless, these are the main topics, and I want to make sure we cover those um, as we go. So what is it? What is this uh, HSS software? Well, first off, uh, there's a couple names for it, so it's important to uh, understand that uh, in case somebody talks different terminology. Uh, it's abbreviated or, or shortened to HSS software. Like Takeo is shortened from Thermal Appliance Company, in case anyone didn't know that. Uh, that was uh, advertised quite nicely at the... Uh, um, at the uh, show in Ashray in Orlando a few weeks ago. Um, it, when the company started in 1920, it was Thermal Appliance Company. So it's uh, the acronym has been shortened to TACO. Uh, so HSS software um, stands for Hydronic Solutions Software. Okay, so that's um, kind of a, a terminology a, a statement. It is a software package that we allow folks to download from our website, free of charge, by the way, uh, but we did not write the software. Uh, the company that wrote the software is actually HVAC Solution, and we'll talk about them a, a little further in the in the presentation. We are their partners, and that allows us to um, offer the free hydronic version of the software uh, to folks like yourself or, or anyone in this audience. It's a graphical drag and drop system design software. So what's that mean? It means uh, there's that drag and drop again. So uh, once, uh, once I get to the software and start showing you how it is, I think everyone will understand what drag and drop means, but it produces a graphical uh, interface or, or it, sh it shows a graphical uh, representation of a design, uh, a, a system design, HVAC hydronic system design, okay, by dragging and dropping components onto the screen. It's pretty straightforward. It means a lot what, what you're reading here, but nonetheless, um, uh, it's, it, it's a pretty simple uh, statement uh, that has a lot of uh, meaning behind the scene anyways. And again, it is a free download from the Takeo website, and there's the actual link uh, to it. So, um, you know, when you uh, uh, review this, uh, you can uh, uh, write that down. But it's pretty easy to get to, and towards the end of the uh, presentation, I will show you how, how you can get to that um, um, spot pretty, pretty straightforward. So as I think I mentioned, uh, most of the uh, presentation is going to be spent on the software itself. So that is where I am going to turn to next. <laughs> Just bear with me for a second. And I've got to um, uh, open up the software. And there it is. <laughs> Not much to it. Although there is a lot to it. Uh, so this is uh, the screen or a, a similar screen to what you could expect when you open up the software. It is a Windows-based program that needs to reside on your computer. So it is not uh, 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 computer-based, okay? It, it has to reside on your computer. So just keep that in mind. Um, and, and when I say Windows-based, uh, it works a lot better with a Windows-based uh, computer uh, than it does with a Mac. Uh, people have used it with a Mac, and, and, and uh, if you know how to use Windows programs with Macs, this is one that you could do like that. Um, but I, I'm not the, uh, that verse in how to explain how to do that. So just keep that in mind. When I say Windows based, I think most of us can understand what that means when you start looking at some of these, uh, you know, pictures up here, right? Uh, save and print and, and open, new, 
and then file, edit, and, and, and other, comp other items there. Then we have some specific ones associated with the software that we'll get into. And then these probably are some AutoCAD uh, features, zoom extent, pan, and uh, other items over here that uh, give you some area, uh, some idea what, what, what's available. Okay, so that, those are kind of the first two uh, uh, columns or rows, I should say. But here's, the, here's where it changes, right, when you start looking down here. So when you use the hydronic version of the software, I recommend you start in the com compact hydronic tab, compact hydronic, or compact hydronic 2 tab, okay? So I'm going to spend most of the time in hydronic and some of the time in hydronic 2. So when you're in this tab or these two tabs, notice if you put your cursor on one of these pictures, I'm going to put it on this red one way over to the left, it tells you what it is, a hydronic boiler. In order to get that component onto the screen, click on the down arrow and notice there's a list of uh, manufacturers in here. So there's a their equipment is actually uh, built uh, their selection equipment is actually uh, is built into the software and you could actually uh, uh, tailor your design around one of those uh, uh, manufacturers if you'd like but i can scoop down i'm just going to drag and drop i'm going to show you how easy it is right i'll just get a condensing force boiler i drag it onto the screen and i drop it here's that drag and drop not much to it right i think everyone can understand how easy that is and you'll notice as i scoot around here it tells you there's some heat exchangers uh, the Taco X pump block. Oh, here's a uh, blue icon. Air cooled chiller. Let me click on that down arrow, and let me go get a picture of a chiller and drag it on, drop it onto the screen. Pretty straightforward. Um, um, uh, and I am going to get one more component. Let me get a pump, since this is a, a, sp a webinar sponsored by Taco, and that's one of the big products we manufacture. I might as well bring one of those on the screen. And lo and behold, it's a green icon. That's another uh, great, great feature of this software. Um, so anyways, it tells you it's a hydronic pump. Click on the down arrow, and I can go get a horizontal frame-mounted end suction pump, left click, and drag it onto the screen, right? So pretty straightforward, dry, uh, drag and drop. I don't think anyone has uh, too much issue with that, or you shouldn't, I, I hope. So let me just undo that, right, my big eraser here, and get rid of those two. So I just have my boiler on here. So I'm going to spend a little time just designing a uh, hot water system or showing you how the software can help you design a hot water system. So first off, let me just uh, click on this component and activate it because I want to mirror it. I want to flip it around. So if I right click, I can mirror left, right, right? So now the inlet and outlet, if you uh, look, uh, uh, seen it quickly, was pointing towards the end of the paper. Now I'm pointing to this way here. So I uh, just keep that in mind. One of the most important things with the software is um, access to the information associated with each component. Um, and in this case, the boiler, right? This is a picture representing the boiler, but each component, everything on the screen, including the, draw including the drawing itself, has a property box. So if I double left click on the property box of the boiler and I click on the key data tab, you kind of get a feel for what these property boxes look like. Uh, they have a lot of information. You know, uh, this is an interactive program. So there's a lot of spreadsheets and formulas behind the scenes tying everything together, but you need to access or see that information that's associated with each component as well. And in this case, notice um, uh, here's our first example of a default valve, default value. Component head loss design. I show I am showing a 15 foot pressure drop through that boiler. Okay, or the software is. I, I, I say I, but it's actually the software. But one of the important uh, items to realize about this software is you control the default values. You can live with what's in there, so you have something. Or if you highlight them, you can type in any value you want. Right? I just changed that to 10 or I can change it to five, or I can change it to 15, so, or back to 15. So just keep that in mind. And that's common throughout the software. So I, I do like to point that out. So it gives us engineers a little a stronger feeling that this software uh, could even be more valuable, right? And, uh, you know, I don't have to live with what it's telling me. I can control uh, the numbers quite easily. So let me hit okay and close that out. 
And I, I, I sometimes I, I get ahead of myself. I don't even tell you what I'm doing here. Notice right now the, the, the green grippers on the boiler. That means the boiler's active, right? Or I could do something with it. I can move it, grab it, uh, open it up. Uh, so a good habit to get into to keep yourself out of trouble is to deactivate things. All you do is left click with your mouse and turn that off. And by the way, I always forget to mention this because I, I do this so often um, or quite often. Um, it really is a lot easier using the software, uh, using a mouse with this software. Uh, I know a lot of computers have little pads, you know, especially laptops or that little button or whatever. There's other, uh, but I find a mouse um, it, it, it makes it a lot easier. It just gives you, like right now I have a wheel on my mouse and I'm kind of zooming in and out. It really gets a, kind of a, gives you a big advantage there. So I'm going to represent some loads here, right? I'm going to draw a very simple diagram and represent some loads on the left-hand side. So I go way down to the hydronic heating and pose load, click on the down arrow, go to terminal, and get a fan coil. And I drag it and drop it on the screen. Before I get too far, let me show you a couple things here that what you can expect from the software. Here is a simple design that I put together just before uh, we uh, started this webinar. And you can see some of the information we're going to start, the software start going to produce for us, right? It's going to help us size expansion tanks, size the pump for flow and head, right? Keeps track of that information. Very important for our schedule for pumps to be uh, properly selected, right? And it gives a nice picture representation, pipe diameters, starts keeping track of the boiler size. Obviously, it's a very small job, but you can see, or a small project, but you can see some of the power of it um, as you start working with it. So uh, just keep that in mind. Or you can use it for a cooling job as well, right? So there it is in, in cooling. The pipe color is temperature dependent. The pipe color is temperature dependent, but the values are, are shown uh, just as well. Um, so in order for it to do its calcs, we're going to have to put in two pieces of information. And when I complete my drawing that I started, you'll see what I mean by that. I have to put in loads and BTUs per hour and pipe lengths. And then if you live with all the other default values, the software will do, uh, produce all of this technical or calculated information for you very, very quickly. So let me get back to the one I was working on. And let me keep going. Oh, uh, be before I get too far, this question comes up every once in a while. Uh, people ask, how do you know what the latest rev level is of the software? So HVAC Solution, this is their name right up here, HVAC Solution. They have a website, and that's their that's their handle, right? The, the, the HVACSolution.com um, has some great information there. But they do come out with periodically with uh, updated versions throughout the year. Um, they come out with a, a big updated version at ASHRAE, so they just released one. And the easiest way to find that out is go to Help About. Some of you may already know that for programs. And notice it shows a, um, a rev, uh, the rev level right here, 9.6.2. So uh, pretty straightforward. That's how you can tell if, uh, what the latest rev level or your rev level is. And by the way, when you uh, have the software on your computer, if you're on the internet and you open up the program to start working on it, it, it checks, the software uh, checks to see if there's a later, another rev level. And if there is, if, you're not, if you don't uh, aren't working with the latest one, it'll ask you if you wanna update it. So, and then you could follow, follow the steps updating it. So uh, just keep that in mind. Although I have heard some companies have trouble with that because of their firewall or the IT department or whatever. Uh, so uh, you may have to work around that at, at your uh, at your own uh, company as you go. So let me uh, continue growing uh, uh, continue growing my design here. So I brought one. Uh, uh, let me just hit undo. I'll do that again, right? So here's the red icon. Click on the down arrow, terminal, fan coil. There's that drag and drop. By the way, the software remembers what you selected. What I mean by that is if I go back to that red icon. Instead of having to click this and this and this, not that that's hard, right? If I go to that red icon and click on it, it remembers. And that's common, right? That's common for all the components up here um, that are available. So I can bring that up and put it on the screen. Well, here's the next, one of the next items we said we talk about, copy and paste. Not very hard once you get used to it, right? So I want to copy both of these items. So I'm just going to activate them both. There's different ways to do that. But I find the easiest way is to draw a box. So I just take my cursor, 
left click on the on the uh, on my mouse hold and draw a box around them and activate them both right click copy right click paste and boom all of a sudden i have four on there you know uh, pretty straightforward pretty easy to do for anyone that's uh, used to using computers notice uh, they're kind of not in a, uh, a straight line or it, it looks kind of a little ragged i can the reason i do that is because if i draw a box around them Notice some icons have become active over here. Actually, one of them is that mirror icon. So, you know, I, you can mirror. There's different ways to do the same step. Uh, so whatever you get familiar with, uh, uh, you know, feel free to use that one. Uh, I don't need to tell you how to do that. One, two, three, four, five, six up. It says align left. When I click on that, see how it aligns them all up along the left-hand axis. If I go right above that, space evenly top bottom. And then look, if I grab them, I can kind of scoot them around because they're all active as well. Pretty straightforward, I think, uh, in that regard. Um, I, I don't think uh, too many people should have too many uh, concerns about that. If, you know, just take your time the first time you use it and you'll be able to duplicate this in seconds, uh, to be quite honest. So let me start drawing some pipe or connect. So I want to connect from the boiler to these loads. Very, very easy to do, okay? This is the pipe drawing tool for 90 degree angles. So I can click on this and it changes that. Or if I go right to the component I wanna start drawing on, right now I'm zooming in so you can see this, and I take my cursor and put it on that arrow or that little tab of pipe, left click and release, and scoop my mouse back and forth. You can kind of, I'm kind of playing here. You can see I'm drawing some pipe or representing some pipe here. Every time you wanna change directions, just left click and release. Pretty easy to do, right? So now I'm going up, going vertical, at least representing vertical, and I left click and I tie into that. You just gotta be careful. You know, it, once you get used to it, it's pretty easy to do. Um, I mean, I could start here, but I just find it's easier coming back this way. It's a little easier when you got the arrow to start on. You can kind of see how easy that is once you get used to it. Take your time, first couple of times, and then once you get used to it, you'll be zipping around on this page as easy as I am. So now, I am going to draw my return and scoot that around. Zoop, zoop, zoop. Oops. Notice what happened there. I uh, I got careless, right? So I, I tied it in there when I actually wanted to go there. Well, no big deal. All right. I hit the undo button and start, start over. Thank God I wasn't in the field tying into the wrong spot. It might have taken a little long to correct to make that correction. Now I can tie in the other three loads. Not too hard to do, but nonetheless, something that you got to, uh, you know, just get yourself familiar with. Um, I, I, I tell people, and maybe some of you have heard this before, um, drawing pipe is so easy with this software. Once you get used to it, it's fun. Uh, you know, uh, hard hard to believe something that, that we have to do. Uh, <laughs> drawing a design is actually fun, but uh, this this, this kind of makes it fun. At least I think so. So now I have four loads on here. So I want to put another column of loads. Well, let's use that great copy and paste feature. So I'm just going to draw a box around all four. Copy, paste. Sometimes it gets a little confusing. Uh, you got to be just be careful uh, where the pipes are. You can, uh, if you're not careful and you don't think it through, you could attach the wrong uh, connect, uh, wrong pipe to the wrong side. Like you wouldn't want to bring this supply into here, right? Even though there's an arrow going this way you know that sooner or later it's going to go, it's coming out of here. So just keep that in mind. It does get a little uh, confusing at times. So you just got to take your time sometimes and uh, just uh, work with it. So I'm going to get my connect arrow and I'm going to, so this is coming out. This is my out. Okay. I want to go from here up to there and this is my in. So I want to come from here and down there. Pretty straightforward and pretty easy to do. You could see the uh, directional arrows. It's one of the items I at least want to point out. Um, so it does show directional arrows, which kind of it makes it helpful, right? Uh, makes it helpful for your audience, for the folks that are going to be seeing this software as you go. It, it, it didn't take very long to produce, right? A nice a little schematic here um, with that drag and drop and connect uh, features. Uh, and, and any one of you, uh, I'm sure, could duplicate this uh, this little quick drawing. Um, and once you get used to it uh, in, in minutes, uh, if not less, <laughs> to be quite honest. 
So as I mentioned, one of the items you need to put in is loads in BTUs per hour. In this case, I'm representing coils, right? I think I pulled up a fan coil, but it's really just some hydronic coil that's in the hallway, in the in, in the hospital room, or, or in the hotel room, or whatever, right? It, it, it really, it's just representing a coil of some sort. So if I go to this top one, double left click on it, and bring up the property box of that fan of that coil. In this case, it's called an imposed heating load dash one. Before I work over here, let me change the designation of that. I, I, I challenge most of you uh, when, when you use the software uh, to to probably update these names um, or these designations or descriptions, whatever you want to call them, right? Uh, to to better represent what your drawing is, your MEP, right? You could call a room number or or a zone or or the type of fan coil or whatever, whatever's uh, best, what, whatever you feel the audience needs to see. Easy to do. Just click on description. Notice this is grayed out, so I I need to access it before I can change it. Just look for a box. Whenever you see that, that's common throughout the software. I click in that box, highlight it, FC dash A. And these three tabs down here, if I hit cancel, it closes the box and does not make that change, right? But if I hit apply, when I say it makes the change, watch IHL1 change to FC-A, and it keeps the box open. If I hit OK, it makes the change and closes the box, just in case anyone had any questions on that. So while I'm in this box, let me go back to the key data tab, and let me type in a load here, and let me hit OK. And notice there's quite a few changes on the drawing, right? If I zoom in here, you can see it's starting to calculate, uh, giving you some flow rate required through that coil. And it's starting to tally up the, the information down here in the boil, boiler. It just it, it just takes that load and adds it to the boiler total load right now, right? We don't have a lot of load in there. And probably the, the most visual effect that you see is the pipe is red, right? The pipe has changed color and it is temperature dependent. The pipe is temperature dependent. Um, and in this case, hot water system, uh, red. Chilled water system, blue. And it actually changes at, at different temperatures as well. Uh, the, the shading does, so uh, just keep that in mind. So I got one load in, so maybe I wanna put a group of loads in. So let me just highlight these three loads, right? Uh, draw in that box, you get used to that. And then there's different ways, right? I can double left click on one of the items and it brings up the property box. Or, or I can right click and go up the property view and it brings up that property box. So there's different ways to skin a cat, uh, I, I guess I can say that. And here's another, uh, I forgot to mention this, here's another default value, a component head loss of five, three, five feet through those uh, terminal units. So let me just put in a load here and hit okay. And again, you can see some changes, some other pipe has turned turn red and the tally sheet's starting to show up here down on the boiler. So right now that boiler is being sized at 100% load. So just keep that in mind uh, um, uh, uh, as you go. And and if you remember what I said, deactivate to get rid of that so I can go on to the next step. So there's other ways to get loads, right? So if I click on one, hold the shift key down, I can click on this one, double left click, and now I have the property box of these two bad boys, and I can put in a load here. And hit OK, deactivate again, click this one, hold the shift key down, click on that one, double left click, and then maybe these are, and then hit OK. You got to uh, notice you do not need commas, but you got to keep track of your zeros. Uh, I have uh, I have made some uh, uh, errors there. You, you end up finding them, but uh, sometimes it gets a little hairy when you put in an extra zero. <clears throat> Excuse me, I had to get a drink of water there. So there's some quick methods of how you can put loads in. And by the way, you know, it depends where you are on the project. I try to challenge people to think of how you can use this software. You know, obviously, if it's early in the job and you haven't done a lot of work or no one has, you could put in all the loads at once, right? So I just highlighted them all. And you could, you know, if you know of the block load, you divide them by eight. Boom, you put in 125,000 for each one and you got a head start. You know, you can kind of get an idea what you'd be looking at for some pipes, pipe sizes and hallways if you got to start thinking about how much space you need or something like that. So, you know, there's some there's some other advantages to possibly using this software as you go. So just keep that in mind.
So pretty straightforward, right? You got to put your loads in. Um, the pipe is sized. The pipe is already sized. As soon as there's a flow rate through it, or, or you know, the software has uh, put flow, flow rate through it, calculated flow rate through it, um, it's sized, and I'll show you how easy it is to display that very quickly. Let me zoom in on the mechanical room. Notice, I forgot to mention that, you can move pipe around or components around. So I clicked on this piece of pipe, take my cursor, and I left click and grab, and I can kind of move it around very quickly. You can see that. I gave myself some more room here. So let me um, add some components to the screen. I'm going to zoom in in my simple mechanical room here. And one of the first items I'm going to add is a little vertical closed coupled pump, our KV model. If I click on the hydronic pump, click on the down arrow, vertical closed couple, I get it close there. Once it turns yellow, it drops in and it starts sizing that pump based on the default values in the system. And it displays that information right there. And then I can right click on it and copy, right click, paste put a second one in there, connect it up. In this case, I got 100% dedicated standby um, and it's shown right on the screen. So pretty straightforward and notice it does have a shading under it. So that is a component that is selectable uh, by the software. This boiler, because I didn't choose a manufacturer, is not selectable by the software. So that that is not shaded in uh, pink or whatever color you wanna call that. Uh, I won't get too crazy with uh, calling it different colors. <clears throat> so let me add two more components here. When I go back up to the pump icon, I go one, two, three, four icons to the right. I get the air separator, click on the down arrow, and I'm going to get a high efficiency air and dirt. This is our uh, inline 4900. I like, to sh I like to show those on the drawing. It's not your vortex. It's not our, uh, uh, well, let me get one of those. It's not your one where it comes in high and, and swirls around and goes out low, okay? So that's probably what you're more familiar with. Uh, maybe some of your MEP details uh, have that uh, detail on it. You may be a little more familiar with that one. So, But I'm going to get um, the inline one, our 4900, very, very efficient. And that, that'll be another, pod, uh, another podcast, another <laughs> webinar down the road. Anyways, let me get close to the pipe. Once it turns yellow, watch the 24 feet on the pump. When I click on it, it jumps up by six feet because if I go to the property box of the air and dirt separator, it shows total head loss of six feet, right? And notice it's broken into three, uh, two components here, design and dirty strainer. And that's really something that's, uh, uh, you know, I like to point out the folks that wrote this program are design HVAC engineers, uh, professional engineers, hyd hydraulic institute, H uh, ASHRAE type engineers. Uh, they follow a lot of guidelines, but they're very conservative, in my opinion. This is my opinion now. And I think if you go through the software, you'll see that in a couple of spots. Here's an example. They've added a little head loss to the system for a, a, a strainer, right, uh, um, that, that they know eventually might uh, get clogged up a little bit as, as over time. So uh, you'll see that in a, in a couple of subtle areas if, if you use the software a little more. So just keep that in mind. Let me hit OK, close that up, deactivate. Now I'm just going to get the last simple component here, expansion tank. And uh, hopefully everyone uh, enjoyed last month's uh, uh, expansion tank webinar that Rich, uh, Rich put on. Uh, I was involved, but Rich did most of the work there. Uh, he did a great job on that one. Uh, so I'm just going to get a vertical full bladder. If I ask the, the team, I'm sure uh, the group here, you could tell me what that, that actually means. But notice what I did. I dropped it here, and I grab it, and I just made it a little smaller so it fits a little better. Kind of silly stuff, but I like to point that out that that's easy to do. And there aren't any pipe lengths in here, but there are default volumes for these pieces of equipment. So it is starting to size the expansion tank. Um, uh, in a nanosecond, I think, um, as we go. I do want to caution you. I like to at least point this out uh, when I work with people, because every once in a while when I review a file, I'll see that the item's not connected. What I mean by that is if I bring a pump onto the screen or something else and I drop it, right? I dragged it and dropped it on the screen, and then I go get it and try to drop it, into the screen so it jumps into the excuse me into the piping it jumps in automatically it does not do that unless you uh take it right from the um uh, icon up top or cut and paste or copy and paste so uh, just keep that in mind i like to point that out 
Um, it will happen to you because it happens to me periodically um, as I'm rushing along here. Uh, so uh, just keep that in mind. I, I do like to point that out. So let's uh, wow the crowd here and display pipe diameters. Very, very easy to do. And, and you know, if you think outside the box, this could be a good presentation tool to the right audience. Okay. So I want to activate the whole drawing. So my the easiest way for me is Control A. You could draw a box around it or whatever. I just hit Control A on the keyboard, Control All, right click. Right. If you left click the 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 and when I teach a class, invariably someone left clicks and all the green grippers go away. So you got to hit Control A and right click. Go up to connector annotations, click on diameter, and there's your pipe diameters diameters displayed for you uh, very very quickly. Uh, we do have a question about pipe material. So let me go to a piece of pipe. I'll just click on this piece of pipe. Remember, everything has a property box. If I double left click on it. I'll bring up the pipe property box for that piece of pipe. And on the left hand side, if I click on construction, notice there is a host of material, pipe material uh, listed in here. So you could have your design tailored around any one of those. And it does it does affect the calculations, right? So if you put a length and a pipe piece of pipe in for steel pipe, the value for the head loss for that piece of pipe will be different than it would be for a piece of copper pipe or a PEX tubing or PVC pipe. Uh, there are different properties for each one of those pipes. Uh, so just keep that in mind. But nonetheless, uh, there, there's that information right there. So let, let's uh, zoom in a little bit so we can talk about how it's sizing pipe. So if I double left click on this piece of pipe, bring up that pipe property box, Here's the criteria it's using the size pipe. Again, make sure you're, most of the time when you go to the property box, you spend your time in the key data tab. Uh, so just keep that in mind. And notice over here, it's got a maximum unit head loss and a maximum velocity. So it uses those two limiting factors and this flow rate, and it selects a diameter piece of pipe to keep those values underneath here. And it shows you which one's the limiting one. So in this case, it's selected a two and a half inch piece of pipe, my velocity, I'm very happy with that. It's uh, below that eight feet per second. That seems to be a magical number, uh, well well, re well um, uh, accepted in our industry. Some folks use a little lower, some use a little higher, different diameters, whatever. But um, you know, from my perspective, you stay under that eight feet per second and uh, you're not gonna have any callbacks or, uh, or complaints uh, from my perspective. So then you got this uh, criteria up here. This is just adding head loss per 100 feet or displaying how much head loss per 100 feet of pipe. So watch what happens if I check this where it said diameter. Remember I said if it's grayed out, you can't access it. I click here and I type in two. It shows you the new values, right? You may, you know, maybe you might want to use two inch pipe for that piece instead, but now you, you can see you're adding a little head loss. But you know, that that the velocities, it's creeping up there, but uh, it could be still acceptable. But again, it's something you can decide. Your team can decide um, what you think. Um, you know, and, and um, you know, if you're if you're a design build folk or a contractor and you got a bunch of two-inch pipe uh, out back, uh, boom. Oh, okay. I know what I know how that's going to affect me now, and uh, I still feel comfortable with it. At least you have the documentation behind the scenes uh, to back that up. So I'm just going to uncheck that and let the software calculate it. So just keep that in mind. Just another design feature that may give you some uh, information. And then we have a fitting factor right here, right? 1.5. Okay, so some folks will ask, how does it uh, calculate head loss for fittings? Um, it uses a, a fitting factor. So whatever uh, whatever length I put in here, so let me type in 300, right? I, it displays for that 300 feet, right? It displays how much head loss that is. That's uh, 7.4 feet just for the pipe. And then for the fittings, it adds, it multiplies that times 1.5 to get you 11.2. So that's how it does it. So uh, that uh, that's that's what it does. It's pretty straightforward, and it's not an uh, you know an unusual uh, situation. I do know when I first started at uh, uh, in the industry, I, I wasn't working at Taco. Um, uh, uh, this was my first career back in 1981 when I graduated from the University of New Hampshire. I was doing cal I was doing long form calculations of uh, piping systems for some nuclear work, uh, nuclear piping 
pipe, uh, pipe systems. Anyways, I, I digress. So watch what happens. Watch the head loss on the pump. When I hit OK, it jumps up by that 11.2 that we just talked about. And notice, notice is something just uh, when you start uh, putting in lengths, um, elbows don't don't stop the length. What I mean by that is that when I put my cursor on this vertical run, notice it shows the horizontal as well. So that 300 feet is actually from this T, this node, all the way to the boiler node. Okay, so just keep that in mind. And you can display that length if you'd like. If I right click on it, back up to connector annotations, length, it displayed it, and I can move it. To, you can grab it, left click and grab it, and move it wherever you want. So you can kind of keep track of that as, as you go. Before I get too much farther, let me just show you um, some of the uh, finer details you can do. So let me click on the hydronic type two tab, hydronic two. These are fittings and valves and, and other components that uh, kind of fine tune your drawing as well. So if I go over here to the control valve, right, and I get close to the piping, I want to put it on the discharge. Notice the valve arrows going right to left. The pipe is left to right. I left click and it jumps in and flips it automatically for you as well. And then I can get some shutoff valves here, put those in. And then, you know, if I hold the shift key down and click on each one, I get a little, uh, I, I like things to line up and look nice and neat on my drawing. And then text annotation is something I want to show you. If you get to a clear area in the drawing, right click. I don't know, a third of the way down, quarter of the way down, it says text annotation. You click on that. This allows you to add notes. They call it annotations. I call it notes, whatever, to the drawing. So if I type in typical, hopefully I can spell. Sometimes I, I have issues with that. I hit OK, and bingo, bango, bongo, there's a nice note added to your drawing. So think about it. You can add all any kinds of notes um, as you like. And actually, you have some uh, drawing tools here. But uh, That'll be for some other time. We could talk about that. <clears throat> the other thing I like to show uh, and, and to try to think outside the box, if I go get a balance valve, right? So I have two wings here, right? So maybe I'm thinking about how, I, uh, how I'm how i going to uh, portray this system to different customers uh, that I have to deal with or, or whatnot. What not. If I get a balance valve and I put it here and I get another balance valve and I put it here and again, you know, I click on them because I want them to line up and look nice and neat. Very easy to do, right? But if I click on this piece of pipe, right click, I go up to connector annotations. This time I can click on flow and I can put that right next to the balance valve. You know, just giving you some thought, you know, thinking outside the box here, possibly you'd be able to use the software to do some simple things like this and help your audience even more as you proceed. So uh, just keep that in mind uh, as you go. So we've created a nice quick drawing here. Um, um, I'm going to get ready. I'm going to transition into selecting equipment. But before I do that, I want to show you one other um, uh, important uh, feature um, when you go to a component. So what I mean by that is if I bring up the property box of the pump, right? So I brought up the pump property box, and I click on the word summary. Here's the head loss summary. I like to look at this um, just to make sure I feel comfortable. Um, you know, obviously there's a value shown there, uh, 51.2 feet. But in this case, I want to I want to make sure these numbers look okay, right? Those are the major components, and then the minor components, and then piping. You know, so I want to ma just make sure. In this case, I don't have a lot of piping um, uh, displayed there, but nonetheless, um, uh, matter of fact, I'm going to add some pipe lengths there. Um, but nonetheless, it does show you that. So uh, that's kind of a nice feature. Matter of fact, let me just add some piping lengths here. And maybe these will be just 100 feet and hit OK. And then if I go back to this pump property box, notice now it does have another uh, pump pipe length uh, for, for that. Uh, it doesn't show both. And that's because if you go to the pump property box, go back to the key data tab, show head loss path. So that's the actual head loss that that pump has to overcome, right? So it's, it's, it's the longest path or the path with most resistance. Most of the time it's the longest path, but it could be just, the, uh, you know, maybe one of these coils um, has a uh, 50 uh, foot pressure drop through it. Well, then the, that would be the, uh, the most uh, highest um, head loss path instead. But in this case, it is the longest path 
um, as it goes through uh, through that component. One of the questions that comes comes up frequently is changing fluid type. The best place to do it is at the generation equipment. Double left click, and there's the boiler property box. Click on hydronic, and notice it does default for working fluid to water, but you can put glycol in it. So I'll let me put glycol in this particular one. I'll just change that value. And when you hit OK, it does affect it does affect the sizing and the head and flow. Or actually, probably not the flow. I don't think it affected the flow. Yeah, it did affect the flow as well, as it should, as it should, um, uh, and, and whatnot. So you can change the working fluid type uh, very easily. So let's start selecting equipment, right? We have a nice little uh, uh, schematic here. Um, I, I think I showed you most of the features that I that I wanted to, that I uh, committed to showing, um, and uh, we'll keep going. But here we go. If I click on a component to select it, right, I brought up the property box. I click on selection. I hit select, and it has selected that component. And if I hit OK, watch that shading. It goes away. That component selected, and the head loss changed on the pump. So it's at 56, I just hit undo, so it's not selected now. If I hit, now that went down because the head loss on this guy is now one foot instead of three feet. It knows the actual, it's tied right into the, the actual uh, 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 head loss for that component, so it's updated that. So just keep that in mind, it does do that. It's pretty interactive in that, in that regard. And then I can globally select equipment. If I click on this uh, select equipment, the thumbs up icon, and all the equipment that can be selected has been selected. So if I click on P1, go to selection, it has selected that component, that pump right there. And actually I think, uh, yep, there's some performance curves here. You can start looking at what the curve would be. Um, you know, we don't need to get into too, too much of that, um, uh, but nonetheless, you do have some capabilities of flipping around and seeing some more information with your selection as you go. So now I showed you how to make selections. The next phase, next step is to show you how to create files. The software will create files for you. And it will also um, uh, uh, save, you can save this drawing to AutoCAD as well. Uh, very, very easy to do. We're going to end up having to save our fi um, file. But before we do that, we have to tell the software what files we want created. What do you say? It sounds complicated, but it's very, very easy. If you just bring up the project property box, I just double left click someplace, right? Normally you'd open it up and it'd be the this uh, uh, screen here. So you got to grab this bar and scoot down to coordination file options. And here's your files that the software will, can create for you automatically, right? Bill of material, control schedule, if you... Detail report, electric, blah, 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 blah. You can see all that. And just to confirm, you can save this schematic to a DXF. You can save it to a DXF. So I want to make sure um, everybody realizes that. I am going to create a detail report in an equipment schedule. The equipment schedule defaults to Excel, but you can also save that to um, a, a DX, AutoCAD DXF, excuse me, as well. So um, I've told the software that I want to create these files. I hit OK. I go up to File, Save As. Right, I'm just going to choose my desktop and type in Webinar 1 and hit Save. And boom, now that, that file is saved. So there's actually icons on my desktop with that name, right? You would put it in a, whatever folder your project is. And to see the other two files, yeah, I could actually go to my desktop, but I could. the easier way is to go to file, open coordination file, detail report, it's a Word document, and all it is is the property box of all of the uh, components. Hopefully, there it is. You can see there's the uh, the air separator, the air vent, any component on there, and all of the property boxes are shown, right? Let me scoot down. There's uh, the fan coils, imposed heating loads. There's a pump here. So it shows you all of that, right? There's the glycol. There's the default volume. It has all the information 
um, associated with that component shown here. Good technical information, good design information you can keep in your folder or, or whatnot, but you have it available to you or maybe start using it for uh, sending out the vendors or, or whatnot. And then if I go back to file, open coordination file, equipment schedule, it's an Excel spreadsheet and it's tabular at the bottom. So anything that was selected by the software, boom, it is now shown down here at the, um, uh, you know, it has a tab uh, or, or a page. So just keep that in mind. Pretty straightforward in that regard, I think. So uh, just keep that in mind. So hopefully, uh, you know, you're starting to see how you can build projects, right? You, uh, with the drag and drop with uh, some of the other features here. But let, let me just show you before we get off this screen, um, manual recalculation. And if you do a more complicated design, I would recommend you put the software. If you go up to edit, it says manual recalculation. The difference is, <clears throat> Excuse me. Watch what happens when you, it's not a manual recalc. So I'll go to this piece of pipe. I'll change that to 400. And as soon as I hit OK, it recalculates everything, right? It, it does that for the whole uh, drawing. So in essence, it's making the changes as you do things uh, instantly. And, and if it's a bigger job, it may slow you down. So I recommend you put it into manual recalc. And that way, when you start making changes, let me go back to the 300. And hit OK. It doesn't change until you recalculate the system. So uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, uh, you know, uh, something to consider. I do like to at least point that out. And um, um, uh, it's not unusual if we end up working together, and that is uh, an option. Please uh, feel free um, uh, um, uh, to, to send me files uh, to, for my review. Uh, more than likely, when I send it back, it will be in manual recalc. So when you open it, everything will be black and zero. You know, the first thing you'll have to do is hit the calculate. So anyways, I did want to point that out um, as, as we went through things here. So there's the drawing. Straightforward, got a lot of information. And you know, boom, you can get, con you can get pricing with this, uh, display, add to your MEPs, MEP for packages. Uh, you have a lot of information associated with that. Um, as, as you go. So just keep that in mind. Let me get a new sheet of paper, right? So I'm just going to go to file, new, get a new sheet of paper, and I'm going to show you the wizards very quickly. So if I click on wizard, hydronic, generation, and I am going to do a cooling only system, mechanical room to the left. So what this allows you to do is answer some questions and let's see what happens. Hit next. Let's use an air-cooled chiller, hit next. We'll put in three chillers at 50%. And I'm not gonna change the fluid type, but there's where you have options to do that as well. Hit next. I'm gonna do primary, secondary. Pretty common for our industry. Uh, nowadays, maybe it's a little different, but nonetheless, uh, and in, in the software's uh, mind, the primary pump is the one attached to the chiller. Secondary pump is the building or loop pumps. I'm going to put in three of those, and maybe I'll, I'll, I'll have some uh, uh, parallel pumping there, 50% with a backup. I'll choose uh, horizontal frame mounted end suction. I'll put a suction diffuser on it, hit next. Expansion tank, hit next. High efficiency air and dirt, I'll hit finish. And bingo, bango, bongo. There is a head start on, on a project by uh, answering some questions, right? So that's the wizard. So uh, that may be even a more powerful tool for you. Um, it, is it is nice to learn how to do things the long way before you go right to the shortcut, right? So uh, I'm glad you bared with me for the, the few minutes while I went through all that. But, uh, you know, uh, uh, there is some capabilities that maybe even save more time uh, with the, some of these wizard functions. And then if you'd like, watch what I'm gonna do here. I go back to compa compact, Hydronic, and if I scoot way over to the right, hydronic cooling load, click on the down arrow. Instead of getting a terminal or a process, I'm going to go get a building. I'm going to represent a building. So maybe I'll represent an office building. It's really just a picture, right? Eh, does that look like an office building? Eh, I guess a little bit. And then watch, if I connect this, make sure you go the right direction, right? And I connect it to the inlet side. 
and I connect this to the other side. And then I go to, you know, I haven't done much. What I do have an idea of lock load, right? I, I use 20 BTUs per square foot, 30 BTUs, 25, 15, whatever. And I know the square footage of my building. I got a rough idea what the load is or somebody does. Double left click on this. I like that. And maybe it's a, again, you don't need commas or units, but make sure you count your zeros correctly and hit OK. Right there's your uh, pipe. Notice the, the the pipe color is temperature dependent uh, because of the 50 degree mark there. But then, how do you display pipe diameters? Control A, right click, connector annotations diameter, and there's your diameter shown. And you can start. Keep in mind, you, you got to be careful here because these values are not accurate. Uh, the flow rate is, but the head loss is not accurate because um uh, you don't have any pipe links in there so just keep that in mind but again maybe another possible use you know if you're in a uh, you got a meeting coming up with an architect or the building owner you know and you want to start going over some things you can you know you, you it just gives you an option right to, to to utilize that i can zoom back out and you can kind of see that uh pretty straightforward so that's that's one way to use the wizard if i go back to wizard hydronic and system you know, before i do that let me get a new sheet of paper and let me resize the paper, right? So obviously you can use page setup. Uh, for me, uh, because of the printers I have, I'm gonna go to file print and choose PDF. And I am going to make an architect D size sheet of paper. <clears throat> and then if I zoom back out, you can kind of see I have a, a you know mechanical D size sheet of paper. What is it, 22 by? Uh, or maybe 24 by 36, whatever the actual dimensions is. So now when I do a system design, if I click on system, I'm not gonna open up an existing one, uh, I'll do piping distribution, direct return to pipe. I'm gonna do a heat pump design, heating and cooling combined schematic. Hit next. Number of loops, I'll put in four loops. I'm just gonna leave these answers alone. You could do vertical distribution. I'm gonna do horizontal right down the, so I, I'm going to have a four-story building with a run out on each floor, right? Coming from the mechanical room that's going to be up top. Hit next. Number of loads, I'll put six on each floor. And they're going to show orientation. That just means in reference to the pipe. In my case, I'm going to show them below. And just to save time, I'm going to have this check. Use this data for remainder of loops. Hit next. I said it'd be a heat pump job, so I'm going to put in a heat pump. Two-way control valve on the discharge uh, on the outlet. Yep, I'll do that. I like that, but there's some other options there. But I do like that choice. Hit next. So I'm going to type in HP for heat pump. I'll put in 30,000 BTUs. And then notice it does it does break it down by sensible in this case. And there's some other criteria. I'm not going to change any of this. I just want to get through this for us. Hit next. Um, my heating source will be a boiler. My cooling source will be a cooling tower. I'll just put in one boiler just to get through this in one cooling tower. My heating will be primary secondary. The primary, uh, I'm gonna manifold the primary pumps will come right out of the tower. It's pretty straightforward, simple system. In this case, hit next. Primary pump, that's the pump attached to the generation equipment. In this case, it's the heating side, right? So that's gonna be that. Um, and then my secondary pumps, in this case, it's both heating and cooling, right? Because it's combined schematic. Again, I'll do the frame mounted end suction, FI model for takeo suction diffuser. Hit next. So you, you can't change the cooling because you already answered that. It's the same, assist, the same set of pumps. Expansion tank, hit next. Hit finish. And there's a head start on a project with all that information uh, for you uh, shown. And then how do you display pipe diameters? Control A, right click, connector annotations. Instead of pipe, you gotta then click on diameters and there's your pipe diameters displayed for you. Uh, all running out uh, pretty straightforward. There's your mechanical room. You know, you can adjust all this, add things to it, subtract, put some lengths in there, but nonetheless, using that wizard could be a, 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 a big representation. One thing you need to uh, keep in mind, most 
except for maybe open open towers, most HVAC hydronic systems are closed loop. All right, people, the question comes up quite a bit about uh, vertical runs or or what about the height of the building? Okay, that may come into play for your uh, static above your um, uh, expansion tank. Okay, but for a closed loop system, once it pushes down, it comes back up. So you do not need to add in the height. You need to include pipe lengths, but you don't need to include the actual vertical height. Uh, so uh, just keep that in mind um, uh, for a closed loop system. Well, uh, I'm, get, I'm nearing the end of uh, my presentation here. I think we covered a lot of grounds, answered most of the questions uh, that I show you, creating coordination file wizards, uh, pretty straightforward there. Um, graphical, dra drag and drop. I think we got most of the questions uh, answered. Again, any question that uh, wasn't answered um, uh, through the throughout the podcast. I can't podcast. I keep saying that. I, I listened to one today. That's why um, uh, uh, webinar throughout the webinar uh, will be answered um, uh, directly to you. Um, uh, uh, hopefully within the next couple of days. Okay. I, I did want to show you how easy it is to, to access this on our website. So let me bring up the TACO website. Uh, we're, ve we're very proud of our website, TACO Comfort Solutions. But to access the um, uh, software, you click on Apps, TACO Design Suite of Software. And there's the, the one that we worked on today. We do have some other ones there. And download software. And again, it does need to reside. Uh, on your computer, so uh, just keep that in mind. 